Diana from Transform Health. My website is transformhealth.biz. I help clients nationwide through nutrition, herbalism, and lifestyle coaching. So if you need help, let me know. Um, I wanted to talk with you today about antibiotic use and how to recover from them. I have a family member on antibiotics. I'm kind of bummed at that they're on it. Um, I just don't want them to end up with the problems that I've had, which is um, a digestive issues and um, as well as lowered immunity. Antibiotic use kills off good and bad bacteria, and that can affect your health from, from now on, basically. There are three things that are not killed off during antibiotic use, and these tend to overgrow in the absence of any good bacteria gatekeepers. H. pylori, Clostridia difficile, or C. diff for short, and a yeast called Candida albicans. So it's really important when you take antibiotics to rebuild yourself with um, probiotics, fermented foods, and um, things that feed good gut bacteria. So we'll talk about them, okay? First, I want to say that there are 500 species of bacteria in your gut, and 70 to 80 percent of your immunity is in your digestive tract as well. So when we talk about getting one probiotic, I'm sorry, it's not gonna it's not gonna benefit you that much. They're testing maybe one bacteria, and they um, they're saying they do a study, and then they say this is the one, but it's really not the one, okay? I had the opportunity to interview Sandor Katz. He's the author of Wild Fermentation and the Art of Fermentation. He talks a lot about how to ferment foods um, using the bacteria that's wild on the food, like sauerkraut. He talked about how important it was to eat uh, fermented foods often and daily. And um, he also talked about how bacteria lives in, live in communities of about 30 and the, how they trade DNA with each other. So if we discover one bacteria and we test it for health benefits, that's what it takes to get a probiotic on the market. However, um, I feel like with 500 species, we really do need to eat a variety of foods and um, do a lot to help our gut flora. And it's not just about getting the one uh, probiotic bacteria, one species, okay? So let's talk about probiotics. How do we take them? Well, first, you don't wanna take them right before you take the antibiotic again. Uh, it would be helpful to take uh, take the antibiotic and then wait about an hour and then start taking the probiotic foods again. Um, either a probiotic tablet or fermented foods, and we'll talk about what they are. Um, that way, you're not kill you're not taking the good good bacteria and then killing it off immediately. Now I know that you take antibiotics every day, um, sometimes two or three times a day. Um, just keep. Just keep trying to supplement your gut flora as you go throughout the day and try to do it after you take your, um, your antibiotic, okay? So um, probiotics, you want to think about um, quantity and diversity, okay? So we talked about um, not, being, not having just one bacteria that's good for you, but you want like maybe 10 to 20 species. And it's a good idea to maybe try different brands and rotate them. And I feel like you want to buy them from the cold section. They're, they tend to be, um, they tend to survive better in the cold section, but also they tend to be more alive. So let's talk about fermented foods. Um, we talked about probiotics um, already. So the, the fermented foods, there's a, sh there's a thing like this. It's a, um, it's a little, um, drink that's either based on milk or rice milk um, or other stuff and there's um you can just drink it or put it in a shake it's kind of sour some of them don't taste that good and I'm not married to any of these any brand specifically um, just take you know like I said diversity and um, try to get different kinds of bacteria all the time um, this is a jar of yogurt. It's a little bit pink because it had strawberry at the bottom. Um, I mixed a few kinds of yogurt together in the hopes that my family member could put this into the smoothie. And um, then, so it's mixed, so there'd be like, you know, three different brands in here. So I thought that would be pretty easy. Um, this is kefir. Kefir is, let me pull it back a little bit. Kefir is good bacteria and good yeast. So we actually have good yeast inside us and that will help us get rid of um, bad yeast or a yeast overgrowth such as candida. And a sign of that would be um, 
could be a thrush on the tongue or a, um, a rash on the skin. Now, it could be a problem with bad bacteria or food allergy too, to have a rash on the skin or um, lack of omega-3. So I'm not a doctor. Check with your doctor. Um, let's talk about some other pro probiotic foods, okay? This is a red cabbage that has garlic in it. It's a sauerkraut. So what I did is you basically put the cabbage under liquid water, the best water you can find, preferably chlorine-free if you can, and then you add salt, a certain amount of salt, and then I add some garlic cloves, and um, it's really, really good. I've had it for a while. This is miso. It's fermented soy and rice, and this is the form of soy you want. It doesn't, it doesn't take away vitamins from your body when it's been fermented. If you get eat just raw soybeans or edamame at the Japanese food store, you might actually be taking stuff, vitamins out of your body because um, there's a presence of anti-nutrients around the soybean. They tend to bind with our vitamins and wash them out of the body. And to read more about this, you could check out Nourishing Traditions. It's a great book about nutrition. Um, or you could read on the um, Weston Price website, the Weston A. Price Foundation, that is. Okay. Let's talk about some other probiotic foods. I have a list here because I you know, didn't think I could remember them all. Kimchi is one, uh, pickles. Uh, a, there's a Russian drink called kvass. Um, it's often made with vegetables like beets, but you can make it with lots of stuff. And um, the advantage of these fermented foods is they're sour naturally. So if they're fermented, they produce lactic acid. And so that that's... Um, that environment, if you're eating that, it helps your body to um, to combat bacteria. It's harder for it to live in this that environment. Um, and our gut flora produces lactic acid as well. So, so we talked about yogurt. Um, there's an Indian drink called um, mango lassi, or just lassi. Um, creme fraiche is a um, fermented cream, as well as sour cream. These are really, really good. If you can find um, a good source of cream or milk and make your own, it's awesome. There are um, cultures available online called um, yogurt starter or kefir starter or um, kefir grains. That's for the milk kefir or water kefir, which is for um, a version of kefir that has is fed on um, sugar in the water. So um, others are gravlax, salsa, Believe it or not, cocoa and co I'm sorry, coffee and um, chocolate are also fermented in order to develop the good flavor. Uh, kombucha is a good bacteria and a good yeast, and it produces um, something that the liver makes. I don't remember the thing exactly. I don't have it in front of me, but um, it can be beneficial. Personally, it makes me very sick. I don't. I don't like it. These are some foods that used to be fermented that kind of aren't anymore. Mustard, ketchup fish sauce, um, so and obviously pickles. So if you want to get pickles, you know, go to the cold section or sauerkraut, go to the cold section and they should be there. If they're canned or they're warm somehow, they're not really gonna do as much for you. Um, it is true that if bacteria get, get killed off through heat or through freezing, like if you had frozen yogurt, they do benefit us still, but um, not as much as if they're alive and fresh. It helps us to remove toxins, apparently, even if they're broken. Um, some other fermented foods to check out is preserved lemons. This is in the um, Middle Eastern tradition. And then there's an Italian, Italian vegetable mix called giardiniera. And then you could also do fruit, okay? This book, can you see it? Real Food Fermentation by Alex Lewin, right here. Um, he has a recipe for peach chutney. It looks really, really good. Um, you can check it out. He also has recipes in here for um, beet kvass. He talks about how to make your own um, vinegar, just the basics. Well, he does have recipes for kimchi, a lot of other things that are really helpful in here. Oh, sauerkraut in detail. Um, he seems like he really knows what he's talking about. So he talks about kefir, creme fraiche, butter, and buttermilk. There is actually a cultured version of um, butter. He also has a recipe for um, salsa, 
<clears throat> and the peach and plum chutney that I, that I uh, mentioned. If you want to check out the salsa recipe from Nourishing Traditions, that's also really great. And she has a bunch of recipes for preserved food, um, including mustard, which was literally just salt and mustard, I think, or it might have mustard powder. I think it might have had maybe whey in it. Whey is um, the liquid from um, yogurt, so it's often used as a starter. Um, sometimes we, you can also do is add a probiotic to your fermented foods. I find that an easy way to enhance what you already have going on. The salt sort of holds the um, fermented food in a safe state until the bacteria can grow enough to protect it. But um, you could also add probiotics, anything you want to grow. And a lot of my information came from a super great book by Dr. McBride called Gut and Psychology Syndrome. And I'll put this written down in the notes as well. She talks a lot about gut flora, what happens, what goes on, and what happens when we don't have enough or enough diversity or enough quantity. So it's worth thinking about. I've been literally working on this for a few years now, which doesn't sound very exciting and it's not, but, um, but it's worthwhile for, um, to improve health. So after you stop the antibiotics, I would say, please continue for a few weeks. And maybe just continue doing some fermented foods daily anyway. We keep sending the fermented foods out in our waste. So they kind of don't stay in there. Um, we kind of need them daily, on a daily basis or every two days, if not with every meal. And some cultures, they do include them with every meal. I'm thinking of the Korean culture here. They have a lot of pickles with all of their food. So I hope that helps. If you need help on your journey toward better health, and you want to talk about nutrition or lifestyle, or you want a custom herbal formulation, let me know. You can contact me at uh, my website, transformhealth.biz. There's a contact page there. You can sign up for my newsletter on the lower half of the contact page. It's free, has lots of tips and articles, and you can also check out my articles on my website, my YouTube channel, and more. So let me know if you need help, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks.